In this video, we'll look at creating parameter menus. To be more specific, we'll be creating drop down menus like those used in the Blast node. The group drop down on the Blast node will allow us to select groups on the model based off all the groups on the mesh. This functionality can be very useful in an HDA and can make a node that it needs to be distributed far more user friendly. These menus are relatively easy to make, but they require some knowledge of scripting. I will cover a couple of use cases in this video. First, I'll create an example using this null. This is connected to the squab geometry. Our initial goal will be to create a menu that contains all the groups on the geometry. This is the easier use case as the geometry is connected to this node. I'll select the null and I'll use Edit Parameter Interface. This will allow me to modify the parameter. When doing this with an HDA, you should use the type properties. As this is a null and part of the network, I will be editing the parameter interface. This group parameter is a standard string parameter. I'll be working in the menu tab. I will activate the menu with use menu. We then have a drop down menu with the kinds of menus that we can use. I will mainly use the toggle field and replace field options. These work best with string parameters. I'll set this to a toggle field and activate the menu script tab. We can choose between HScript and Python. A lot of the native nodes in Houdini use HScript, but we will be using Python. The process of creating a menu is simple. We will create a list and then we will return the list. I'll call this list groups. This will be a list, so it will need to be placed between square braces. It will be a list of strings. The first value I set will be 1. The second value will be A. Every menu item will be a pair. The first item will be the value. The second item will be the name listed in the menu dropdown. I will duplicate these values a few times. We will have 4, D, 3, C and 2B. Once we have created our list, we'll need to return a value. In this case, our value will be the group's variable. I can apply my changes, and my group parameter should now have a drop down menu listing A, B, C, and D. So we are not getting a drop down for every parameter, but for every pair of parameters. If I select A, I will get 1 in the field, B will give us 2, and C will give us 3. One thing to note is that you must use square brackets. If you use curly brackets, you will have unpredictable results. This will be because we're creating a dictionary and not a group. This will give us a basic menu, but it is not what we want in this case. What we want is for this menu to return groups from the squab geometry. First, I'll need to get the current node. In this case, it will be my groups null. I will do this using a dictionary that is generated by Houdini, and this dictionary is called quarks. I will store the current node in a variable called node. This will be set with the quarks dictionary, and I'll use the get function with the key node. Now I have the node, I will want to access the geometry on the node. I'll store this in a variable geo, and I will get this with node.geometry. We can now access the information in our geometry. In this case, we'll get our groups using the method primgroup. This will give us a list of all the groups, but it will not work for our mesh. This is because we need a pair of values, a value and a name. Groups will no longer work as the return value, so I'll need to create a new variable. I'll create an empty list called names, and we'll populate this using a for loop. For G in groups, I'll then add the name of the group to my menu. I'll do this with names.append. The argument will be g.name. This will give us our value. But in this case, I want the name and the menu entry to be the same. So I'll duplicate this line. I can apply my changes, 
and we can now use the drop down menu to populate the field with the group names. So this will work well when we are connected to the geometry, but that will not always be the case. I have a second node in the scene called Menu, and this is not connected to any of the other nodes. I want to use the group parameters on this node to access the groups from the Squab node. I will edit this node parameter interface. I will use a menu, and this will be a toggle field. The script can be copied and pasted into the Menu Script tab. There are various ways I could access the Squab node. In this case, I'll start by getting the parent node of this node. I'll do this by calling the parent method on the node. I can now access any of the nodes under the geometry node. The variable will be target, and this will be set with parent.node. The node that I'm looking for is squab. The geometry can then be set using the target node. I now have the groups listed in my menu. The next example will be a little bit more obscure. I'm referencing the basic mail rig, and this is being done at a point where the mesh still has the bone capture weights. There are a lot of properties which we can look at. In this case, we'll get the bone capture attribute. This will be used to give us the list of bones. In this case, it will be difficult to use the bone capture attribute. So I'll use the capture attribute unpack node to give me more workable parameters. I will simplify the attributes by specifying a prefix of BC. Now I will look for the names of the bones. I'll find this in a detail attribute. This is the attribute with the suffix P capped path. The prefix is BC, which is what we set up in the unpacked node. I will use the same method that I used previously, but instead of squab, I will be looking for the mail node. We will get this geometry with target.geometry. I will then use the attribute value method to get the value of the attribute with BC capped path. This will be stored in a variable called path. This attribute is a list, so we can loop over it. We will do this with for p in path. I will add this to my list with names.append and we will append p. This will be done twice, once for the value and once for the name. We can now return the names. This does not work because I'm referencing an incorrect node. This should be referencing the unpack node. I'll now have the bone capture regions listed. The last example will be getting joint names. I have a very basic KineFX skeleton, which I'm referencing in the skeleton node. I'll be getting the names of the skeleton. I'll activate the menus and I'll set the menu script. I'll get the skeleton node. My list will now be called names. For point attributes, we'll want to reference the points instead of the geometry. I'll do this with target.geometry.points. This will give us a list of all the points on the geometry. We can now loop over the points with for point in points. Because we're working on points, we'll need to be careful to avoid attributes that exist on multiple points. That will not be the case in this example, but we'll still need to take this into account. First, I'll get the name attribute with point.attrib value, and this will use the attribute name. We will then make sure that the name is not already in our name list with if name not in names. If the name is not in our list, I will add it with names.append name. Once again, I will do this twice, and our name can now be returned. I have not changed the menu setting, so this will give us a standard drop down menu. So these are all the various menu types. We should note that these menus do not all work in exactly the same manner. Most of these menus will return the index of the listing rather than a string value. 
And that's the basis of how to create scripted menus in Houdini.